He's back. He's doing it again. And this time, you really should support this. please make sure you smash all those magical YouTube buttons for us. Hit that subscribe if you haven't smashed like if you enjoy the content and hit that bell notification icon if you want to be notified every single time we go live or we drop a new video. If you're not new to the channel, however, you will remember that some time ago we did a video covering Mini Wargaming's Dave's first game found campaign. When I say game found, it's essentially a Kickstarter. Think of it like a Kickstarter. And we covered the first one called Ravage Star, where Dave released a range of miniatures specifically called the Veil Touched. When we did this video, what we did is we looked at these specific miniatures, how pretty they were, and how perhaps you could proxy them in your games of Warhammer 40k, because they looked quite chaosy. He seemed to take some... Uh, influence from Games Workshop's Chaos Space Marines. And let's be honest, with Mini Wargaming Dave, there is no surprise there. Anyway, he's back. He's doing it all over again. And I expected, to be honest with you, just to see another range of miniatures. And in fact, there's two more ranges of miniatures. There's two extra factions as part of the Ravage Star campaign. Game Found is live again right now. There is a link in the video description below. And actually, if you use that specific link in the video description below, it will tell Dave that you pledged from me, from this link, from my content, from our community. And last time you guys smashed it, and he was so super impressed about how how committed my community is to supporting things like this project and supporting me by using my link. He came to me again and asked if I would do more content on Ravage Star. Now, of course, it's Mini Wargaming Dave. Who says no to Dave? No one says no to Dave, ever. You don't say no to Dave. So I said, yeah, absolutely, 100%. I'm more than happy to cover Rav Ravage Star all over again. And I assumed that what I would be doing is another video that looked at the miniatures and saw how perhaps you could proxy them in games of Warhammer 40k. Because, you know, my audience, you guys, the people that watch the channel predominantly only really are interested in Warhammer 40k, or at least your main interest is Warhammer 40k. And when I delved into the campaign a little bit deeper, I realised that that just isn't the case. There is, in fact, two more factions coming with Ravage Star. A dwarf space, space dwarf kind of dwarf squat thing. I have to avoid certain names. Space Dwarfs. The Space Dwarfs. An alien, monstrous bug race type looking thing. So perhaps some of it might in fact be proxyable for games of Warhammer 40k. But the most important part of this new campaign, the thing that stood out to me the most was the fact that not only are they releasing two more races and over 400 miniatures, but they're also looking at releasing their own rule set. Some of you may be slightly disenfranchised with 10th edition 40k. Some of you might be completely loving and enjoying 10th edition 40k. But new games are also always exciting, and this could be something for you. So when I delved into it and I realized there was a rule set, I started having some questions about this rule set, about the game, and about kind of the intent from Dave and from the Mini War Gaming team with Ravage Star. So I messaged Dave and said, hey, look, I'm going to do this content, but I actually have some questions. And I thought to myself, if I have these questions, there's a strong possibility my audience also has these questions. So I asked him if he would do a little bit of an interview for me over a video call so I could throw that out to you. And so I grabbed hold of Dave and I started asking him some questions about Veil Touched, about his project and about his campaign. First thing we were interested in is why is he doing this? And what makes it stand out? What makes it appeal to people like you? Here's what he said. So obviously, Dave, this is uh, version two of Ravage Star because we've already done the first version um, before with the miniatures for the, um, what were they called? The Chaos ones? The Veil Touched. The yeah. Veil Touched, yeah. Not Chaos Space Marines, the Veil Touched. Uh, but this time around, the big news is that you're creating a game to go with your m models. So what made you decide to step away from just making models and for this occasion, at least, to make a game for Ravage Star? So the goal was to always make a game and the first campaign served as a good test to see if the audience, the community, would want a game. And so the support from the first campaign was an overwhelming, yes, we want a game. Minis are cool, but ultimately a game is how we can engage and get a full experience out of this range of miniatures. 
Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I I mean, I covered the first um, the first. I'm gonna call. I know it's not a Kickstarter, and it's on. It's hosted on GameFound, but I'm gonna call it a Kickstarter anyway because it's kind of the same thing. Um, and we did some content on the channel about it. And what we did at the time, I don't know if you saw the video, is we compared the Veil Touch miniatures to Chaos Space Marines and how could we proxy them in games of 40k? Uh, because mm -hmm. typically that's my audience, and I think historically that's been Mini Wargaming's main core audience as well has been Warhammer 40k. Um, yes. Obviously, you guys have touched on other things like um age of sigmar and lord of the rings etc so what in your opinion is going to make ravage star appealing to tabletop gamers who have played those kinds of systems is it because it's just something new is it something wildly different like what what will make people want to play this game instead of perhaps the ones that we're typically used to seeing i think it's a matter of enhancing the hobby experience because our our main demographic is the ages of 25 to 35. Obviously, there's younger audience and older audience, but that's the majority demographic. And a lot of those war gamers have family, have friends, they have kids, they have people that they want to engage in the hobby with, but don't necessarily because there isn't an obvious solution or an obvious game to go to for that. Because some of the game systems that exist are complex and may create a barrier to entry for one to get into if it's their first time playing a tabletop miniature war game. So what Ravage Star does is it combines the board game audience with the war game audience. And it makes it so people can buy the game and they can, it's pre-assembled miniatures. So they right from the box, they can play right out of the box. They're not required to do a whole bunch of assembly because to a first person, like if my first time experience, if, you know, if I'm required to assemble a bunch of miniatures and I've never done it before, it's incredibly overwhelming. And it's not this place of enjoyment. It's this place of, oh, I don't know how to do that. Um, I, how do I do this? What do I need for this? What, wh how many hours is that going to take? And so, like, yeah. at this stage of life, it's like time is the currency. Even for children as well. So, so my eldest is is a 10-year-old. Um, and he, he, over the course of the last 12 months, at one point, he tried to get into Age of Sigma, the Games Workshop uh, tabletop game. And I remember him picking his his chosen faction. You'll be very, very proud, Dave, because he picked Corn Bloodbound as his chosen faction for Age of Sigma, right? Of course he did. Well, naturally, of course. Naturally, uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And um, I remember the kind of almost anguish stroke stress on his face as a 10-year-old when he got it out of the box and realized that it was multiple different pieces that he was going to have to cut out and glue together. And like, it didn't look like the box. Right? right, and then and then he he did some. He even tried to do some painting. Um, now he is a little bit like me, wildly impatient, mad amounts of ADHD. And when he finished his painting, and he realised again, it didn't look like the box. That kind of he didn't he didn't have a great experience then. And I think learning very quickly that to grow his force, he would have to do more of this kind of building and manually putting together his miniatures that weren't necessarily the most simple in the world. Don't get me wrong, GW make great miniatures, but not the simplest process in the world for a ten year old. So I'd argue right. this probably also appeals to a significantly younger generation as well. That's right. And I'm, I'm quite like in my personal situation where I have three kids ages nine to 14, right? So it's like right in that age where they can get into games like this. And so when there's something like this that comes right out of the box, right? Like this is the razor worm, the Gorkog razor worm, right? Where you see it, you see a picture of it on the box. And when you open the box, this is the mini right out of the box. There's that instant transfer of excitement that they see on the box and then they can pick it up and be like, oh, that's cool. And then ha let's play, right? So you can literally go to your gaming club or buy it and go home and then play right away and like transfer that feeling of that, uh, that fun, that curiosity, that mystery, that excitement of getting into the game right away, removing that barrier to entry. Perfect. So that's why Dave and the team are making a game around these miniatures rather than just trying to sell you guys miniatures. I think it sounds interesting. I think it sounds exciting. I think barrier to entry is something that perhaps Games Workshop actually got wrong in 10th edition in some aspects. They got right in other aspects, but it perhaps wasn't as simple or as easy as it could have been for new people or young people to get into the game. That's interesting. That was exciting. But of course, like I've already said, right, we're comparing this to 10th edition. We're talking about 10th edition. We're talking about Games Workshop. We're talking about Warhammer products. And Mini Wargaming, as I mentioned in the interview, have obviously covered Games Workshop products for the longest time. So surely there must be some inspiration from Games Workshop, maybe even, dare I ask, some copies or some things that have been taken out of their current systems that they've decided to try and use in Ravage Star. So I asked him. So in terms of Ravage Star as a game then, rather than just looking at it as you selling your own sort of printed miniatures like before, um, 
I would assume the answer to this is yes, uh, but I don't know for definite because I haven't yet fully seen the rule set. But have you taken any inspiration from Games Workshop games? Is there anything that will be familiar to people who are used to things like Warhammer 40k or Age of Sigmar that you've incorporated into Ravage Star to kind of make it slightly familiar for them and less scary? Or have you just gone completely from scratch with doing our own thing? So there are elements taken mechanics that are amalgamized into a hybrid unique system so uh, just to give credit where it's uh, where it makes sense Matthew from mini wargaming my business partner who's been my business partner for 16 years who's developed custom narrative campaign rule sets and gaming systems like he is a mastermind at this and there's no one better in my opinion in the community to be the one who's collecting all the information from the community because there's a lot of feedback, feedback driven. We got the gems that we're picking out and it's done through his mind, which is fantastic because historically speaking, Matt gets people into games. I've known Matt since I was five years old. He got me into role playing games. He got me into Warhammer. He got me into the games that I play and he gets many people into the game. So it just makes sense that he would do that. And to answer your question, yes, it's like there's there's activation systems, there's rules, there's there's attack dice, there's defense dice, there's there's familiarity and also the familiarity of scale. So you can bring a number of units to a game that feels like a war game, that feels like you're having a battle on a tabletop. So there's that as well. Okay. But we, like, would you call any of it kind of... Excuse me, I'm going to put this. I know you laugh at what I say sometimes. Would you call any of it kind of almost direct ripoff from a GW game? Or is it, it it's similar because it's a D6 system or it's a dice-based system or whatever, and that's kind of where the similarities end? Or have you looked at certain mechanics in things like 40k and gone, we want that kind of mechanic to exist in Ravage Star? So there's there's definitely similarities. Is there an exact ripoff, meaning it's the exact same mechanic? I would say no. Okay. Right? Because every every single mechanic that is incorporated in Ravage Star has influence from multiple gaming systems, but isn't the exact same as any specific gaming system. So is there a leadership morale system? Yes. Does it function the exact same way that we might be familiar with it? No. So it's like that. So the concept is the same, whereas the actual nuance of it is different. Like for example, it's a D10 system, not a D6 system. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, core, I think to some extent, core concepts across sci-fi based tabletop war games are going to kind of be similar anyway, just because of the yeah. nature of what they are. Um, <laughs> you mentioned uh, a moment ago as well that it was Matt's building this driven by kind of feedback from the community directly. So have you like, how are you building? I, I assume Matt's not just sat in a room with no one talking to him. If he's taking feedback, he must be getting it from somewhere. How have you set this up? Have you got like a working group? Has this, has this been built by like hundreds of people's feedback? Have you got a focus group? How like how's this rule set developed? So in a general sense, uh, any sort of feedback is welcome to anyone in the greater community. So that's done through comments on videos and there's a playtesters group in our Discord, the mini wargaming Discord, where people can just give generalized feedback. And then there is a more potent playtester, a dedicated playtesters group that uh, were given the rules before the rules were made available publicly, which they are now. Um, it is... Okay. Yeah, it's made, uh, it's, it's a like a pre-alpha, so it, it's with the understanding that things will be tweaked and changed, but the general skeleton and core of the rule set is is there. Um, but yeah, so it's like, it goes, it funnels through this, and then ultimately it's uh, up to us to decide, okay, this is what people are feeling, this is what people are enjoying, uh, this is the feel of the game. What What is the game? We want it to feel cool. Rule of cool is number one, and then does it feel right is number two. So, for instance, this one here, we look at the model, and then it's like, okay, it would feel cool if it was able to burrow underground and pop up and make dudes fly everywhere. Like, that would feel cool. Does it feel right? Yeah, it kind of does feel right, because this thing's massive, right? Like So, like, this is like a 32 mil dude, and then here's, like, the 120 by 90 mil base big guy. And the mechanics are crafted around what it feels like, which is a lot of cool things happening on a battlefield, and there's a fog of war, which is uh, represented through the dice pull out of the bag activation mechanic system. Similar to a kind of bolt action system? Are the similarity to... is you pull activation out of a dice bag, but the actual mechanic is slightly different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. That's cool. So you, and I don't want to put words in your mouth or or make a tagline for you, but you could argue that this is arguably then a tabletop game that's been made by gamers for gamers. I would I would agree with that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yes, okay. absolutely. That's super cool. Yeah. That's really, really cool. So for me personally, that sounds incredibly exciting and wildly challenging at the same time. To try and develop a rule set that everybody's going to love and everybody has some input to is not going to be easy. But, you know, he says Matt's the man. So I'm interested to see what people think of this rule set, which, as he said, is available now, but it's kind of in alpha stage playtesting. So you guys can get your hands on this rule set right away and start playing Ravage Star and feedback to Mini Wargaming and perhaps some of your feedback might shape the future of the game itself, the game of Rubbish Star. I, I, you probably noticed for the video title, I stole that phrase by Wargamers, for Wargamers. I actually kind of love it. it. It's, I think, something that people have been a bit... What's the word I want to, I want to use? People often feel like GW can, on occasion, disregard community-based feedback and feeling and just kind of do their own thing. Um, I think that is probably fair to say. I don't think necessarily everybody feels that way, but I feel like some people definitely feel that way. And this sounds like mini wargaming are approaching this from a completely different angle. Super challenging. Sounds interesting. Uh, I'm interested in the fact that they're using D10 instead of D6. I think that's going to be super cool and offers lots more variety in terms of how they can manipulate the requirement on a dice roll to fairly represent the narrative that they're trying to tell on the tabletop. Um, you'll notice that they have influence i guess from gw products um i think that was going to be expected because of how much of games workshop or how many of games workshops products mini wargaming have covered in the past and the fact that we kind of all still go to games workshop as the the kind of example for miniature war games especially in the sci-fi space but actually no direct ripoffs nothing exactly the same there's perhaps a morale system there's going to be shooting and there's going to be moving i mean they're just commonplace so they're not specific to games workshop when we did do the first video, however, we did make it specific to Games Workshop because we talked about the Veil Touch, as I said right at the start of this video, and we compared them to Chaos Space Marines and how people might be able to proxy them. So I'm interested. This time around, Dave has told me there is over 400 miniatures for Ravage Star. I want to ask him some questions about those. So obviously, Ravage Star, the big news this time around is the fact that you're writing a rule set for this tabletop game that people will now be able to start alpha playtesting, as you've just spoken about. Um, what made the first campaign so successful was the Veiled Touch minis, which I have to say I thought were absolutely beautiful. And it was genuinely a joy to do that comparison video to see how they would proxy into Warhammer 40k. Now, before we've done this little chat for the video, I've actually talked to you about the, the new miniatures that are coming up, um, because there are some that could, again, be proxied for different factions. There are some that quite clearly can't. This particular campaign is showcasing 400 or 400 plus miniatures for, yeah, mm -hmm. more than four. Okay, they, 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 if you saw Dave's thumbs up there, right? So more than four hundred miniatures are coming up in this campaign, which is an incredible amount across three different factions. So it, I again, I'm making an assumption, but I want to ask the question for our audience: Is three factions where it ends, or are we looking at expanding, expanding? Are we looking at potentially a future where it looks like Warhammer Forty K with 10, 20 factions? Are we staying at three factions, and this is the model range for now on? Are we going to continuously add new factions with new rules? Like where does this where does this end or does it end? So uh, I would answer that by saying this is the this is the discre discovery of a universe. So uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot more factions. There already are in the lore. Yeah, yeah. There's already uh, let's see what can I okay Vanguard. That's the human faction. There's no miniatures for that yet, but that exists in the lore. There's an orc faction, which oh geez, I probably shouldn't have said that, but you know what are we gonna do? I let that out. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different ideas. Ha, space vampires uh, that was matt's idea to do something like that right but here's the thing that's just ideas that are floating around that's not ideas coming from the community so ultimately it's community driven so if people want a certain faction that they want to see it just manifests itself because the will to make it happen becomes so strong many people want it it happens and that's what happened with the amari the space dwarf faction it was a it was a poll that we did on the okay. uh, YouTube community, and there was a number of different options that we provided, and then that one by far won by a landslide. This is what we want, and so I'm like, okay, that's cool, because any of the options that we presented, we'd be cool with all of them, right? But yeah. that was like majority that came out, so it was a loud voice from the community. 
with the first campaign, I I mean, I keep referring to this first video I did, but with this first campaign, campaign, I don't know if this was his intention, Dave, and I'm not going to put, again, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but it felt very much like there was a concerted effort to make those miniatures fit the 40k universe. Uh, I don't know if that was in, or not intentional, but it felt like it was intentional. Um, what I've noticed this time around, looking at the two new factions, is that that doesn't seem to be quite so prevalent as it was before. So did like was there a concerted effort to try and step away from GW kind of unit types and sizes? Did you just make what you think was cool and there was no consideration either way? Did you try and make some of it fit? Like what was the design process for these factions? So that was it's it's interesting because everything that you just said, the answer is kind of a little bit of everything. Right? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, the first time around it's uh yeah, we're heavily inspired by a number of things. Can you proxy? Well, of course you can, because you can proxy anything in a game. Can you one to one yeah. proxy? Well, we can make it convenient for people who choose to do that. And so if we lean into that a little bit, then, heck, we've been doing it for years on the channel anyway. The whole market, Dave, is this is a proxy. This this isn't a flamer. This is a melter. Like, that's the whole thing. So yeah. anyone that's been watching the channel, they, they understand that that's the, I, that's the way we choose to wargame. And so, yeah, for the first time around, you want to use them as proxy? That's how you choose to do it. It's up to you, man. Right? We will we'll do that on our tabletops. Um, and cool. The second one, which second one design, which was the Gorkog, the alien bug race, right? There was a little bit of consideration there, but after a while, it was like, you know what? We're going to make a game out of this. So let's make units that we just want to make from whatever, whatever influence or inspiration comes from wherever. And so if a person were to look at the ranges one-to-one -one, proxy for proxy, right? They would have half for the Gorkog specifically, they'd be like, yeah, this is okay. I can do this and this and wait, wait, what does this go for? Oh, that doesn't go into anything. So it'd be a mixture. Okay. With the Gorkog and with the Amari, the space dwarves, um, that was a concept that came out before any sort of, let's just say any sort, sort of space dwarf race had been announced by any other tabletop sci-fi game that exists. And so every sculpt that you see in the Amari is a hundred percent like, all right, rule of cool. Let's just make whatever we want. So, okay, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Does that mean if I come up with a super cool race, Dave, and I pitch it to you in the future, we can make it happen? I mean, you said the words, and I didn't disagree with them. So it's like, okay, and like, okay. but here's the thing too, right? That's one voice. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah share that. Right. Yeah, like that's obviously you're going to, I mean, you say something, you make me laugh, and you checkmate me, and you're just going to influence me to do have. Right? I have so an it's... army of, of angry Vikings behind me that I'm sure if they all <laughs> click that link that I'm going to put down below right now, you know, we can make we can make a faction a thing, I reckon. Uh -huh. You absolutely could. And you know what? To add that even better, you can actually create the lore for the faction. And if it gets, like, supported enough with, like, a commander of that faction, which you create lore for, and it's supported by the community or the sub-community, which is your community, then, yeah, that's a loud voice in the community. Obviously, people want this. And so we just create the mechanism where that happens, where the, the models are designed and the miniatures are created. So it's like, yeah. If you're telling me I can work with you on a faction, mate, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make that happen. I mean, that, that's what it is. That's what this whole thing is, right? Like, what? why is it that you got to be like, for, for instance, like, you got to be a CEO of a company, you got to be like this person who really, uh, you would think to make that kind of stuff happen. But why can't the nine year old, who is my son, have an idea and make a story and present it and share it. And then that becomes the voice in the community that makes things happen. It's like the reverse It's turning it on its head. Right. If I'm honest with you, I think that's part of what has sold me on on the project in general. Um, so I know I coined the phrase earlier, made or, de or sort of designed, developed by gamers for gamers. I, I, I think that's part of why I love it and why I want to see, me personally, I want to see it do well. Um, often I feel like uh, certain bigger companies, your voice, you, you think your voice is just flat not heard and people don't listen. Um, and, and sometimes I think they can make design choices, which a lot of people disagree with, but they make those choices anyway because they've decided that that's what's going to happen. And I think with Ravage Star, what's really sold me on it is that uh, it's it's more of an open book for people to kind of get involved in, rather than being the this really super secret. And now you've got it, and you're not we're not going to change it. This is what it is. So I, I'm you know I'm I'm fully behind it. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's. I think that's a good way of putting it as well. That's an accurate description of what's actually happened. Yeah, that's how it's felt. I mean, obviously, we've been talking about it for a little while. That is how it's felt. Like, hey, this is the thing we're going to do, but we want to make sure that this is a thing that works for everybody as best we can. Um, the, the 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 feedback in the, the kind of giant funnel feedback in from the wider gaming community in through those playtesters, I think, gives it that vibe as well, and I think that's really important. So, uh, but like I said, if this means that I can design a faction, Dave. Mm -hmm. we're making it a thing okay all right so you know it's funny you should say that because the first thing that we're doing uh and i haven't announced this yet but uh, i guess i'm saying it here in addition to when i'm actually going to be announcing it is that day two of the campaign the 8th of november because you know eights are a thing they yeah. go on forever um that's the design your own commander contest that we're having so anyone can like come up with a, a summary of their commander just a short write-up like a comment even uh, okay. And so we'll do that. Anyone can come up with it. Doesn't matter how old you are, right? Because anyone can come up with an idea and write it. And then, in addition to that, they can make a sketch or something, right? But that's not even required. It's just come up with the idea, and you can submit it. And then the best idea wins there. So that's going to be voted by the community. You know, people have a chance to read other people's commander ideas, and the one that's voted will be made into a miniature that'll be immortalized in the game right so that's just a show the introduce people the mechanism of this is truly community driven we this is how we operate it's how we've always operated we've presented whatever it is that we were doing to the community hey guys we're making a bunker hey guys we're making a film hey guys we're doing this we're doing a narrative campaign whatever it is we're doing a studio update we're making a game no matter what it is that's we kind of don't really know how to do it differently like that's how we just do it right we're just like hey guys what do you think help us do this because ultimately because of you we are doing it and we're doing it together so the most exciting part of the interview clearly is the fact that if you use that link in the video description below there is a possibility that we as a great whole community can design our own faction and have that faction feature in ravage star he said it he said it's a thing so i want to make it a thing you need to click that link. And actually, there's another reason to click that link. Obviously, we talked about the new miniatures that he's adding. There's more being added to the Veil Touched. There's two brand new factions. So even if you're not going to play, just click that link and check out the models that they have designed and they have produced. They are absolutely gorgeous and they're absolutely beautiful. I just kind of love the fact that this seems to be feedback-based driven and kind of and kind of driven by the community. Um, I, I love the idea that people can get involved in creating factions and characters. I love the idea that the rules have been funneled in from the wider community through playtesting uh, and the playtesting has been carried out by people in the community. All, all in all, I think this is a really positive move. We have a smaller company, Mini Wargaming comparatively with myself is huge, but comparatively with Games Workshop are a smaller company who are giving it a go and having a go in making their own war game. And I'm fully supportive of this. And I hope more people are inspired to try this in the future. The more different types of games that I have, the more different types of rule sets, the more creative genius that comes together to put rule sets and tabletop games together for me to play, the happier I'm going to be because I get more variety. And variety is fun and variety is key. So I'm fully behind this. But is this just it for Veil Touch? Are they going to release three factions in a rule set and that's where we're going to end? Well, this is where I ask my sort of final question of Dave. And that is, where's it going to go? How big is this going to get? Or is this as big as it's going to get? So we've touched a bit on the models. We've touched a bit on the last campaign. We've touched a bit on the rule set and the kind of intent and what you're trying to do uh, right now. But here's my final question for you, Dave. What's the end goal with Ravage Star? Where do you where do you want it to go? Do, do, is this a, a five year project? Is this a never ending project? Is this something that you want to be huge? Do you want to challenge people like Games Workshop and Warlord and people like that? Where, what's the end goal for Ravage Star? The end goal is for it to be a thing that's here and it's here to stay, right? Because we've been doing this for sixteen years. When we do something, we decide to do something, we do it, and we just it's now what we do. So Ravage Star is something that's here to stay. Retail is the thing. That's the plan to support local community, local hobby stores with getting that local gaming group. Because it's one thing to engage online. It's one thing to support a campaign online. Right. And then which is needed at this stage of the development of this, because we need to make those molds in the factory. We got to do that. But the goal is retail to get it into stores, hobby clubs, to get it into conventions to get it everywhere because it's incredibly fun. Like for me on a personal level, it's reinvigorated my hobby enjoyment. Like I'm painting with my kids and this is something I'm doing outside of work. And that's like that to me, that's priceless. You can't, you can't pay for something like that. 
It just provides this environment where you can do it easily and fun. And you can give something like this to your to your son. And this is a PVC miniature from the factory. And it's not breaking because it's hard PVC plastic. It's the high detail hard PVC where you can do that. You don't break it. It falls off the table. You pick it up. It's not this like so carefully crafted thing that you got to feel stress about because it falls on the floor. It's That's kind of part of the experience. It falls on the floor. But you put it right back because it's fine. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I saw that little clip you put on Instagram and shared that with my audience on stream because I was like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and so that's that's right. It's like that that's feedback. It's like let's make them durable so that honestly my kids can come in and I'm not stressed when they pick up a model because why isn't that more part of the experience? That can be. Let's make it that. So we just we make it that. Okay, so to get it into retail, to make it a thing, to make it a, a genuinely kind of like – viable product people need to jump on and support the game found project right yeah to make it hap to make it big to, to really to use the, f the phrase of kickstarting it so that it is its own mechanism and then it just reorders happen direct from factory to distribution so we don't plan on selling it afterwards we won't be selling it um it'll be created from the factory sent right to the distributors supported to the stores so that there isn't this like default competition that we have with other stores because okay. we are creators. Like we make videos, we do battle reports, we do that stuff. That's our strength. Our strength isn't a mechanism of sale. That Those are already in place. And Gaz is doing that. So Gaz, who has experience in the industry, in the trade end of it, he understands that mechanism. He has the contacts and the relationships that have he's spent years cultivating. And so yeah. that groundwork is being laid as we're the front end, so, uh, supporting it, promoting it, doing all this stuff. So once it's once it's out there, it's out there everywhere out there. Anyone who pledges, their money goes towards them getting whatever they've pledged for, but mm -hmm. then funding getting it into stores across the countries, I assume, globally. Yeah, yeah. Ma major distributors in each like continent. Like that's the goal. So it's just like, and then because here's the scenario that was asked to me, like this is a scenario we don't want to have. We're going to make it so this doesn't happen. It was people order on the campaign, they get their stuff and their buddy comes over and they say, hey, that's cool. Where do I get it? Oh, sorry. Campaign's over. Can't get it. So a better scenario there is, oh, yeah, let's go to our local gaming store and pick it up. That makes way more sense to us because that just supports the actual thing that we're trying to do, which was create a reason for people to get together on the tabletop and have fun, whether it's with their kids or with their friends, at home, at gaming clubs, enhancing the experience. That's it. Well, you know, it's and it's also amazing talking to you about it as well. We we have known each other for a couple of years now, I reckon, where we've been talking relatively frequently. Um, and I have to say to people that are watching this, Dave is always pretty enthusiastic anyway. However, this <laughs> is, I mean, it's true. However, this is probably the most enthusiastic I've ever seen you. <laughs> which is i mean in seriousness it's inspiring to people like us as well you know i'm I, much like you and, and matt and the team i'm a creator but to see someone else so excited so hyped so positive about this it rubs off on people and it, i think it does improve like general mood for people that are surrounding themselves with people that are doing these kinds of things anyway so i mean from me personally i wish you guys the best of luck with this i'll be supporting it um i'm gonna hopefully continue to support it with content and stuff in the future um, but if we're going to leave the audience with one thing, if there's, if there's, if, if for you, if there's one thing you can say to people to try and get them to pledge and click my link below, by the way, mm -hmm. my link yep. below people, what's yep. the one, what's the one selling point? What's the one thing you would say to people to get them to jump on board with Ravage Star? I would say by clicking on that specific link that Liam has provided, you are supporting Liam and you're showing the power of Liam's influence by clicking on that link because if you watch liam if you tune into liam which you do you're watching this video right now you support liam and his content and what that does is it provides information that provides information for us for liam and for the impact that you have on the campaign and it's great because then that empowers us as creators to do more in the future so that's that's you. It's a reflection of you. It's a re reflection of the uh, the community, and it's it's awesome. This is why I love you, by the way, because I was like, "Hey, how do you sell Average Star?" And you were like, "Nah, fuck that. I'm gonna sell Liam." That's what you said. <laughs> I love you, Dave. Hey, Dave. Well, I mean, <laughs> thank you. you. know what? I okay. Well, you know what you did, Liam. You unlocked me meeting people like a couple years ago. It was you that introduced me to a few creator groups, 
that now there's existing relationships and collaborations happen more frequently, more potently across the world. So, yeah, it's your fault, okay? Like, it's it goes back to you, man. Like, that's how you operate. And you, you taught me a lot about that. You did. You just And you didn't expect anything in return. It's not like, hey, can you do this? And then we'll do this. And here's some sort of transactional thing. It's like, no, there's zero expectation for really anything. It's just let's promote fun and how we can. Let's make fun videos together and just see what happens. Talking about making fun videos together, here's one last thing I want to say before we say goodbye to Dave. Uh, sometime next year, 2024, I would love to fly back out to the bunker and we won't play 40K together. What we'll do, Dave, is we'll play Ravage Star together. How does that yeah, sound? Yeah, that sounds awesome. That's it. There it is right there. There's the, we'll work out what pledge level we need to get to. There's the goal. That's what we're going to do. We'll fly out to Canada yeah. and play Ravage Star. And then you'll fight with your character that you create. Yeah, faction, yeah, yeah. I think. Your, your faction. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're leading your faction. I think that's even, that's it right there, right? So yeah. I love it. Cool. Okay, well, you're a hero. Thank you. You're a legend. And I hope the project does really well. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. So there you have it. Ravage Star is here to stay. That's the words from Dave's mouth himself. They're super keen on this. It's here to stay. They want to get this into retail shops and grow it. And I'm behind it. I think it's amazing. I've said this multiple times. You're probably already bored of me saying I'm behind it. But I, I think this is I think this is exciting. I think this is genuinely exciting. Um, and, you know, Dave and Matt, I've met both of them. I've been out to the bunker. I've spent time with them. They are incredible humans and incredible people in the wargaming community. The only way this becomes a thing, the only way this is here to stay, the only way they have success, use that link. And if you don't use my link, use other people's links, but support Ravage Star. Grab your hands, grab your hands, don't grab your hands, get your hands on a copy, get your hands on the rules, start playtesting, start feedbacking to them, make it the game that you want it to be. I'm super behind this. I think this is an incredible initiative. I think this could be a really exciting time. So use that link below. Support Ravage Star. Support fellow wargamers and help develop this game. A big shout out to Dave for taking the time to sit and talk to me about it and answering some questions that I'm not sure he was completely expecting. Slightly more difficult, perhaps. But I wanted to ask them. I feel like these are questions that we're all going to have. How much influence has come from GW? How much do you have GW in mind when you're developing this product? How much of GW's kind of rules have influenced your rules, all those kinds of things, I think are obvious questions. I think if I was to develop a game, it'd be quite difficult actually to avoid almost carbon copying some aspects of a GW rule set and how they work. So it's very interesting to hear it from Dave, how this has developed and, and what they're doing to make Ravage Star a thing. Anyway, like I said, if you want to support it, you hit that link below. Otherwise, let me know what you think of this product in the comment section below. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one.